Morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here uh, to talk about um, some of the observations that IBM's made um, around the data catalog metadata management space. Um, I head up product management for um, IBM Data and AI, uh, really looking at how data governance, metadata management, and data catalogs can support your journey towards, uh, towards AI. Um, it's actually, I'm delighted to follow the earlier speaker who was talking a lot around um, the offense and the defense uh, of the role of the CDO. This is a, quite a nice follow on for that. And I think I'm going to steal the offense and defense analogy he was using. So, first of all, you can't do AI without having a grip upon your data. All right? Um, we call that there is no AI without IA. And the reason is all the things that many of our clients have been doing to date to be able to understand, collect, uh, and govern their data, if they don't have that right, then you're never going to be able to get the efficiencies that you need to make in your AI. Most of the time spent of data scientists is actually spent looking for information, determining if they can trust that information. And so the work that many of our clients have been doing to build metadata management systems and govern their data is actually the, the perfect stepping stone towards moving towards AI. And AI is real now. All right? There's, there was, you know, even 12 months ago, extreme amount of hype um, in the market uh, around AI. But what I've seen over the last 12 months is actually now many organizations putting AI to work, whether it's to better predict customer churn, whether it's to better bring new products to market targeted to a specific marketing campaign, whether it's to automate processes that exist inside the business. These things are now real. But it's not just a magic switch that occurs. You have to get that data piece right underneath. And importantly, it's now recognized that this isn't just a cost-saving piece. This is really about driving revenue. And data governance is a big part of that. Data governance to date has really been about reducing risk, protecting information, the defense part of the analogy. What this is now about is turning that into offense and turning your data into something that can power your journey towards AI. And I typically, when I go and see a client, I typically talk to those clients along this value curve. Um, many of our clients recognize the need to get to the right-hand side. Right? This is where you're able to derive value from your business through and your data by using AI, disrupting the business models and your disrupting your own industry to be able to change the way in which you operate using AI. But many of our clients are on the left-hand side of this diagram. They're looking at data modernizations. They're, they're building data lakes. They're thinking about how they can build the next generation data analytics and AI platforms. But there's no magic leap that gets you to that right-hand side. Typically, metadata management systems exist to allow you to collect and understand that information. You're putting in place data quality uh, systems to be able to detect quality. You're bringing your data together to try to understand it, bringing it into a data lake. But that doesn't serve the problem of how you can then put that information into the hands of the data science community so that it can actually easily consume and use that data and actually move the needle on that 80% of the time they spend finding information. That's where this explosion in data catalogs has come from in the market. Everybody's building a data catalog. And the reason that they're building those data catalogs is there's a recognition that the metadata management systems we've used to date do a very, very good job of providing an IT-centric view of our information. We allow you to bring that information together. We can catalog the metadata for that system. We can display the operational lineage of that, of that data. But it doesn't really expose it in a way in which a data scientist can use it. So the data catalog market was created to operate against the same metadata that you've been harvesting as part of that governance initiative, but exposing it in a way in which a data scientist can easily find the information, can determine whether they trust that information, and importantly, can get access to that data and go and use it. And there's some, see, some key capabilities with data catalogs that allow that to take place. Um, there's a lot of information on this chart, but on the left-hand side, these are the things that many of our clients are doing with metadata management systems today. They're defining their business glossaries. They're understanding where all their data resides. 
they're defining the governance policies and the governance rules associated with that data. Perhaps they're classifying some data, detecting automatically where the business entities are inside their data. Being able to curate that, being able to uh, steward that information using things like workflow. All very important. But again, it does nothing to help a data scientist become productive with data. So on the right-hand side of this diagram, this talks about the uh, capabilities that a data scientist actually needs to get value from that data and become productive. They need an intelligent way to be able to find information in a way in which they can make a quick decision to determine what this data is, do I trust it, and can I go use it? They then need to be able to have very easy tools that they can use to get access and prepare that data. So self-service data preparation capabilities, being able to join data, shape data as they need to, and build self-service ETL flows so they can just connect to the data wherever it resides, whether it's in AWS, whether it's on an Oracle database, wherever it resides, and pull that data into their workspace so that they can then become productive with that data. A big part of that is also the collaboration that that enables. By opening up data through a data catalog to a set of consumers, then they are able to collaborate and, and, and um, curate that data so that then they can determine the value that they're, go they're getting from that data and expose that out to the rest of the business. So turning it into a much more collaborative uh, platform to allow that, um, th the consumption of that data. All of that underpinned by end-to-end -end lineage. So lineage is extremely important on the collection phase of your information. Being able to collect data, be able to understand which systems that data's flowed through, how it's been populated into the data lake, which fields have come from where. Downstream lineage. On the flip side, the upstream lineage, being able to understand who's used this data, how this data has evolved. Has a new data set been created because two data sets have been joined together? If I've produced a machine learning model from that data, I need to know which data was used to train that model. When was that model retrained with different data? So having the full end-to-end -end lineage from the source system all the way through to the end delivered result by the consumer is extremely important. And that ties into being able to provide the trust and the transparency as you're looking to run AI into production. And why is this important? So, a uh, recent survey from Figure 8 uh, talked about data scientists, really focused on the jobs that they do. Um, and the jobs that data scientists enjoy the most, surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, is doing the, the data, right? Working with the data, figuring out algorithms, mining for patterns in that data. They hate all the boring stuff around finding, cleansing data. But that's exactly where your governance programs can actually help, and that's where the data catalog can help. So if you want to do AI efficiently and effectively, you really need to ensure you're tying it to that data piece, the data catalog, and the governance pieces. Um, and unfortunately, the things that a data scientist hates, it actually takes up all their time, or a good proportion of their time. So the data scientists, you know, they didn't get into data science to be there you know, putting requests into IT to find data and get data delivered to them. They just want to get on with doing that job. So if you can move the needle on giving those guys the capabilities that they need to actually be able to go and consume the data, you're actually going to then turn the data science practice into an efficient machine that can deliver the value that you need to your business. So at IBM, we talk about the AI ladder. We use this ladder to explain to our clients where they are today, and how they can help move and transition from a mindset of collection of information and a technology base that's focused on collecting, collecting information into one that turns into consumption of information and empowering knowledge workers to actually go and use that data. So at the bottom of the ladder, we've got the collect phase. All right, this is all of your databases. All right, this is where you've been collecting information. Organize is our governance layer. All right, these are all your data governance uh, programs you're putting in place that, as I said, to date have really been focused on that collection of information or the defense of information that Norman from Credit Suisse spoke about earlier. As you move up the ladder, you can then use that organized phase with a data catalog to turn that into uh, a mode of consumption by the knowledge worker, giving the knowledge worker the tools in the analyze step to be able to do data science, be able to do analytics, and become effective. 
And then finally, the very top rung of the ladder is this emerging need to be able to run AI at scale in production. Approximately less than 11% of data science models actually get pushed into production and used. That's because there's been a lack of governance, a lack of trust, a lack of transparency, and a lack of know-how of how to do it. So we now have capabilities at the infused days, at the infused rung of the ladder, that actually allow you to deliver that trust and transparency, all underpinned by your governance program that you've put in place in the organize. So if I drill into the organize rung a little bit, that's where, as I say, that's where I sit. That's where the, uh, where the governance pieces fit in. We talk about it across these three areas. Be able to organize your data. Be able to automatically discover what your business entities are in your data. Understand all of your data wherever it resides. That's data that's in your data lake. That's data you've got on cloud. That's data on premise. That's structured and unstructured information. You don't need to physically move data into a data catalog but you can augment the metadata management systems you're doing with a data catalog so that you can have that intelligent view of that information. Once you've done that, you then need to govern that data, making sure that you've got policies and rules, making sure that you understand the quality of that information. And then as part of that, being able to serve that information then up to drive the intelligence from that data, providing self-service access to the information. And as part of that governance program, thinking about how you can reinvent access to that data. So governance, as we said, has been about protecting data. As you start thinking about exposing that information to the data science community, activating your governance program is really key to that. So you already know what your data is. You already know the policies and the rules that govern that data. We can use AI to combine those two things and activate your governance program. So if you've got policies that say you shouldn't have access to credit card numbers, for example, you know where the credit card numbers are inside your data because you've intelligently understood and profiled that data and understand where those credit card numbers are. So then as a data scientist is accessing that information, you can mask the sensitive information like credit card numbers on the fly. So you're exposing more data to that population, but you're actually intelligently masking information as you need to make sure that that information is still protected. That's just one example of where you can move from this mindset of collection of information into consumption using intelligent capabilities. Um, and at IBM, we've uh, released our Watson Knowledge Catalog offering, which spans the entire scope of those needs of that users. So using our technology from our portfolio, we've been able to leverage all of our capabilities that we've been using for metadata management for a long time, being able to bring the collection of information, intelligent profiling, data quality, lineage of that information to organize, and then layering on top our consumption self-service capabilities so that we can then focus on the needs of the data scientist and the business user, allowing you to seamlessly go from a perspective of collection of information, and then empowering and monetizing that data. It allows you to accelerate up the AI ladder so that you can then start to not only deliver further value from the governance programs that many of you have been putting in place, but you can turbocharge your path up that AI ladder and start getting that data science, the analytics community, and delivering proper self-service using those capabilities that I, hi that I highlighted um, earlier. And one of the really important pieces that IBM's done is the Watson Knowledge Catalog is integrated with our AI portfolio. So it's not like you have to buy traditional software where you've then got a huge amount of integration to do. Using our intelligent knowledge catalog, you can catalog, govern all of your information as part of your governance program, but the self-service experience for that catalog is natively integrated with the rest of our AI portfolio. And that's really important for a couple of reasons. First of all, if I'm a data scientist, I want to use my data science tool to build models and notebooks. To find the data, which is, as I said, 80% of my time roughly is spent finding that data. If I've got to jump through a whole bunch of different hoops to find that data, I'm not driving that productivity. So I can use the knowledge catalog 
inside my data science tool so that I can find that information quickly. I can build my flow and have that information delivered to me so I can then go and use it. Of course, you can deliver it to other tools as well, but it's integrated with Watson Studio. And then what's important is I can use that data to run and deploy that information and then run that model into production using OpenScale. And if we think about governance, data governance, we've been doing for a long time, being able to understand our data. How does that evolve into governing AI? How do we run AI effectively in production with trust and transparency and auditability? OK. Well, our data governance domain, we see the, the, the growth of the CDO focusing on data governance, but increasingly growing towards having to understand and be responsible for the AI governance of the organization. So having the governance platform integrated through the build chain into the, run, into the runtime chain really gives the governance team the ability to start to broaden their capabilities to focus on how they can run AI at production in scale and then keep control of the trust and transparency that they need to be able to do that. So they're able to move the needle on that only 11% of models that are being delivered. Um, everything we're doing, um, built modern architecture, we are focusing on microservices, containerizations, everything's run multi-cloud. So we're really focusing on how we can deliver integration, simplicity uh, on these modern platforms so that you can focus your governance energies on driving the productivity from that data and helping you move up that ladder towards AI. A um, couple of key use cases. Um, this is kind of where we've seen our clients delivering most value. So they're coming to us and they're saying, you know, we need to democratize our data. What that actually means is they need to push that data into the hands right, of their users. So that's the self-service piece. There's an increasing need for data scientists to get access to unstructured information. There's a wealth of information locked away in unstructured data, PDF documents, whatever. And it's a black box. They don't use it. They're not going to go and read a bunch of unstructured uh, documents. And so what we can do is we can use some of our natural language understanding capabilities, read that document for you using AI, extract out the key pieces, turn it into structured data, so that you can then use the extracts of a bunch of regulatory documents alongside some structured information that you've got and run analytics and data science on them. Making sure that the uh, data catalogs that you're using are integrated with those productive use tools is fundamental. If those tools are not integrated, if your catalog's not integrated with the tools that you need to use them, you're not deriving those value from them. But also looking at how we can support our clients broadening their journey from data governance into AI governance. All right, that was much quicker than I normally do it. All right, so in summary, metadata management systems, data catalogs, uh, you know, complementary systems, we are integrating them to support that collection, consumption, or offense-defense paradigm. You need to make sure, my advice, is that as you're looking on how you can move towards AI, that you're really thinking about if the tools and technologies you're using allow you to accelerate that journey. AI is real. It's not going away anytime soon. There's been a real shift over the last 12 months to clients that are actually doing AI, and they recognize the need that they've got to get their data in order. Um, but importantly, Make sure that the tools you're using are supporting that entire governance and AI lifecycle, because this is the next wave that we're going to have to think about from a data governance perspective. Thank you very much. <laughs>